Hi, uh, uh, we are at the definition phase right now. And because we want to uh, look at this, uh, at this uh, webinar in a more practical way, then uh, this is the phase where you basically try to set your goals for the training. You try to uh, think what, what actually to do and you want to plan the, how it's done. Then my colleagues will follow with the education design, which is more focused on how to make the how to make the training uh, more acceptable, better, more beneficial for users, and also on the technical part, which is uh, uh, also very important. And I think it's actually harder to 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 do. But yeah, well, let's start for for starters. Just very brief introduction of Kaipo Cyber Range platform. I mean, I think everybody is familiar with the platform, but just let's let's do a quick recap so we are we are all on the same page. Uh, well, uh, Kaipo Cyber Range platform, as as itself, the the platform in a nutshell. Uh, the, the most important thing here is that it's first open source cyber range in the EU. I mean, as, as we all know, there, there are plenty of other cyber ranges, but they are more uh, commercial based and that uh, has its own benefits, but also its drawbacks. Um, one of them is that there are uh, issues with creating training and uh, with sharing the training between the platforms. And that's basically the reason why we are here. But yeah, uh, Kaipo itself, it's developed since 2013 at Maastricht University. It was supported by Czech Ministry of Interior uh, a while back with several projects. And right now, as I said, it's open sourced and it's also built on OpenStack Cloud, which, is, which was developed by, by Red Hat. And we are actually using only the open source tools, open source approaches and open approaches. Uh, what is important to mention here, we have also additional tools and materials available. One of them is uh, Kaipo Lite, which will be more introduced later today. Uh, there is also a tool called Crichton, which is uh, for uh, simulation or let's say emulation rather of uh, the adversary activities. So that's the nice way how to schedule and uh, run attacks in the infrastructure. Uh, also, uh, one thing to mention here, uh, Kaipo itself is free, is open source, always be, like no strings attached. But if you need help, we are also able to provide like paid support or we are even able to deploy the, the platform for you. Uh, and then it depends how much work is that and so on that we can always discuss over, over email and so. Kaipo itself has two use cases. The primary, the primary use case uh, is training. Uh, that means we are able to prepare hands-on events for red or blue team. So it means we can focus on attackers or defenders. We can also go through the mixed approach, but uh, yeah. Uh, the training itself is uh, level-based structured learning, which means that the, the trainees actually follow some structure and they go step by step, which helps them to, to, to understand how everything works better. Uh, for training, we also, or Kaipo has an extensive amount of monitoring and feedback tools like uh, questionnaires, but also you can monitor actually the progress of the trainees inside of the platform. So you can see if someone is lagging behind and needs some help, or if you can see someone is uh, fast. And this uh, is important for uh, two reasons. One is of course, you need to monitor your training and know how it goes and if it goes well. The other thing is that you need to collect all the information you need for uh, lessons learned. And that's uh, more connected with the development of the training itself, but there is definitely lessons learned phase and you need information for that. And of course, uh, Kaipo itself, because it's accessible via web browser, that it means that you can use it in your class and also it can be used remotely. So you have participants all over the world. Uh, for example, we did, it, we did this during uh, Concordia uh, consultant uh, webinar. And, uh, and yeah, sorry, we did it during the uh, Concordia consultant webinar. So the particip participants were all over the world and it, there was not an issue. 
Uh, also, I would like to state that uh, the training, I think it's very easy to design and develop. Uh, we will show you everything today. So I hope that we'll see a lot of training uh, scenarios in the future. On the other hand, we have also exercises. Uh, so cybersecurity exercise uh, is from our point of view, always technical red blue team exercise. That means you have a blue team and uh, which is mostly from the, from the organization. So it's a uh, cyber operation uh, security team or uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, or CSER team. And basically they are defending the created infrastructure against our attackers. I can imagine that we can also make uh, something like the, uh, the team is also attacking, but we prefer not to do it. Uh, the big difference between training and exercise from my point of view is that the exercise is always focused more on strengthening the, uh, the skill set because you need, I think, um, high amount of skills to, to go through the exercise successfully. It's just not about uh, the technical part, about hardening, about uh, fixing infrastructure, but it's also about communication, about processes uh, from the po point of the view of cybersecurity incident response team, also solving incidents and so and so on. Uh, we have some possibilities to provide uh, monitoring and feedback here with uh, third party tools, but mostly for exercises you need uh, expert feedback, you need people who really know how it works to provide everything. Uh, the exercises can be actually run uh, as, a, as a remote even, but we strongly from our, our experience prefer that they are on site. It doesn't have to be in like, let's say our uh, laboratory or our cyber engine arena, but it can be also somewhere else, but the people need, uh, need to sit together. Um, Otherwise, there, 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 is, there is so much complexity that it, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And well, the, the last point here, I think the exercises are really hard to design and develop. We are usually spending like half a year to year to develop the, the scenario for the exercise. But on the other hand, I talk with my colleagues and maybe like this, this is just a cliffhanger, we can make a also webinar for exercises later. I think it will be so, so much fun. So let's do it. And yeah, well, and very briefly, the last thing about the uh, Kaipo itself, uh, I would like to, to talk about the advantages as open training. I mentioned it briefly at the beginning that uh, with, let's say, commercial cyber ranges, sometimes you have issues because you cannot share what is created there and so on. And we are trying to address this on, on Kaipo level and also Concordia level and basically European level, we have in Kaipo something we're calling open training format, which means that this is uh, human readable, it's machine readable, it's based on, on JSON or YAML or both. It's based on uh, widely adopted tools like Ansible. So uh, everything is perfectly available. Uh, you can, the, exchange the, the developed uh, training between instances. Basically, I think we can also make a conversion to other cyber ranges. And I think the biggest advantage here, except of course, the possibility of sharing is that because everything is as a, described as a code, that there is a high reusability of uh, the components of the training. So basically we can put everything together from building blocks and it's much faster and of course, cheaper. And uh, because everything is all again descri described as a code, we are using Git for uh, versioning and branching. So this also helping us to, uh, let's say, keep everything in order. But like more about this, uh, there'll be later in talk uh, from one of my colleagues. But back, uh, let's go to training design. My part is uh, really focused on the first stages of the design itself. So it will be covering more, uh, let's say the theoretical ideas. Uh, from my point of view, and like we can, because this, this is very, I think, young discipline, there are, there, are, there are approaches, there are a lot of them, but from my point of view, there are three important frameworks or three important uh, uh, frameworks or definitions uh, which you need to follow to, to design, let's say, successful and useful training. Uh, 
it, they are covering the technical part and the attacker part. This, this is a framework from ITRA. Uh, the, you need to follow also educational part, but more about the developing of skill set. That's the NICE framework. And of course, uh, then there is, uh, let's say, the educational part uh, of from the point of view how to teach. And that's, let's talk about Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, the, the NICE framework itself, uh, I think it's very useful for now. Uh, it's, uh, it's developed by, by American NIST uh, organization. It, uh, it's focused actually, or it's divided into uh, uh, several uh, parts. The first one is a high level, it's categories, which basically is grouping the functions or the cybersecurity functions that you can see actually on the right side. Then it follows for the specialty areas uh, where you can see what is uh, deeply uh, happening there. And the last but not le least is work roles. Uh, this one, I think from my point of view is the most important one because uh, there are actually uh, specific knowledge, that there are specific knowledge, skills and abilities which are described there. And then you can basically try to map these uh, no, uh, th this knowledge, skills, and abilities to your training. So you know what are you actually uh, teaching the people and if it's beneficial for them. Um, in the future, and I think right now it's in the draft phase, there will be also a European framework, which is done by ENISA. And as I said, right now it's draft and we're, hope we're hoping that we'll switch to that in the future, especially because it's much uh, simpler than the NICE framework, which uh, has a lot of categories and roles, and it's really hard to go through, but it's, it's an option. Uh, from the, let's say, uh, red team uh, point of view or from the technical uh, part of view, there's a, there are meter frameworks. Um, we decided to use them for designing our training and also our exercises because they are based on real world observations. Everything there is uh, basically based on uh, real APTs. Uh, and these things are tactics, techniques and procedures, which basically means that you can define what is uh, going to happen in which moment of your training through that. Uh, also right now, there are actually three, there are more than Mitra attack, there are actually the cyber analysis repository which are describing pseudo code basically snippets for analytical tools. I think it's very useful, especially if you're able to put it together with the, with the attacks from the previous phase. Uh, and the last but not least here is, a, I think it's called Center of Threat Informant Defense. And there are basically emulation for adversaries. This is more useful for exercises than the training itself, but uh, they are also worth to check. Okay, let's go on. Uh, uh, deeper, deeper check into MITRE attack. Uh, it has basically a lot of phases here. Uh, it's, it's also possible, for example, to use skill chain by, by Lockheed Martin. But the, the advantage here is that uh, uh, in the attack, you have basically all the techniques, uh, let's say, bounded to, to some phase. So it, you can basically. Uh, design the training around this. It's not necessary to use all the phases as you will see a bit later uh, in, my, in my example. And the last uh, part here is the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, which I think uh, it's a good description, like at least for the, for the beginning of, uh, of the training development, because you need to actually uh, aim to certain level here uh, of, uh, of the taxonomy and uh, basically uh, reach the, 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 yeah, reach the appropriate level. So for example, uh, that you can, teach, uh, you can teach the trainees in the way that they are able to use the information or basically you can uh, even teach them so, so well that they can create or, de or develop something new. For example, uh, at the Maastricht University, we're using Kaipo for teaching students and then they are later able to, be, to develop their own uh, training. But let's move on. Uh, there is training design process. 
uh, very, very briefly described uh, this, uh, this process uh, follows several simple steps. It can be also, you can also imagine this as, as a cycle, by the way. Uh, the, the first uh, most important part is the, or at least from my point of view, is the analysis of needs, because someone need, uh, needs to need to talk with, let's say, the customer. The customer can be internal or it can be external, uh, but you need someone who has the idea that they need to uh, get some training and you as a person who is developing the training you need to ask uh, the, the right question here you need to define if it's uh, the training for a blue team or red team you need to decide who's the tar target group here or audience you need to define the goals or you need to talk with the person about goals about the, how long the training should be about the structure and so and so on and then you basically get all this uh, uh, thing, you get all this information from the analytical phase and you try to define all these things. It's more about uh, really defining everything uh, in a very high level way. So you can see, uh, uh, or you can, you can set some boundaries later for the development phase. The development phase itself, as, as the, the name says, it's about the developing the scenario. Here it's dividing to the technical part and the educational part, hence our uh, following talks. And this development, of course, uh, should follow, again, any, uh, let's say, cycle or any agile approach, because you need definitely more than one iteration from our experience to have everything uh, fine-tuned and well. Then uh, there is a delivery phase, that, that which will be also addressed uh, later. This is about uh, delivering the training to your trainees and about the uh, best practices, what to do and what not to do during the training. And the last uh, phase here is about lessons learned. I can really, really recommend to have a lessons learned meeting after every training you have done with your team so you can uh, I realize what was wrong, what was right. Uh, again, from let's say more exercise point of view, uh, you can have this meeting also with uh, the external customer, and you can collect all. It, you need to collect all the feedback here, and just let's proceed to the training example, which follows everything we talked about. And well. Uh, how to set your goals. This, this actually follows the, the scenario we developed uh, recently for, for our students. And it's also part of Kaipo platform as a demonstration scenario. And uh, with this scenario, we want to, or we basically want to demonstrate to students how to get uh, a root on the machine, how the penetration testing works. And uh, then basically it makes sense that this is more red team scenario. So it means it's, it's an offensive uh, scenario, not defensive one. It's also uh, very important to, to set the target group. Here we know uh, it will be for students and the students don't have actually any real knowledge of the topic here, which uh, also tell us that we need to uh, set uh, this, uh, this training as a class-based. We need to attach some uh, presentation with that and from my rough estimation it can be for two hours then if we move further uh, about uh, let's say having ideas for the scenario uh, we are trying every time to put everything in some real life story here the story or just the basic idea of the story is that uh, the student is a junior penetration tester and has a task to assess uh, one of the company's server uh, this, again, is getting more interesting during exercises where you can follow, for example, some advanced persistent uh, thread group, for example, from the MITRE framework. Uh, and basically, as you can see, uh, you can or you should explain, in this case, students how penetration testing work, uh, show them the tools, and the important part here, show them also write-ups so they know it's not all fun and games, but you, they also need to make reports. Uh, and the goals in more detail, what are we going to train them 
on what is going to happen. Uh, again, from NICE framework, we want to train uh, their ability to identify the, the security issues based on the, the analysis of vulnerabilities and configuration data, which means that we are basically training them to be, uh, let's say, the, the pen tester or the vulnerability uh, analyst. Uh, and uh, from the uh, from the part of Mitra framework, we know that uh, we don't want to use the whole chain here because it's too long and it doesn't make sense because it's just a brief scenario. So we use the uh, reconnaissance part and then we will be able to set up the initial access and escalate privileges. Like from the, for the high level point of view, this is enough because like, we know what is, what is supposed to happen. And the planning part then, which follows, and this is the, this is the design uh, design of the training. Uh, we definitely need it from educational point of view. We need uh, study materials and presentation because the students don't know much about the topic right now. Uh, again, my colleague will cover this deeper and we also need to explain them how Kaipo platform works. So for example, the part of the training will be the first page where it's written what to do and what not to do. Uh, we want to also uh, put a uh, level per every step because we again think it's a easier way to grasp the topic. So the first step we'll set up as a find, find in telnet on non-standard port because it's, let's say, a bit of obfuscation for the students. And of course, and later we'll teach them how to uh, guess the password using the, the vocabulary attack uh, with uh, Hydra tool. And the uh, last level here will be escalation privileges through misconfiguration uh, pseudo. And yeah, and we also want to edit some uh, questions and some assessment and tests so we can reflect the hands-on part. Uh, it's uh, from my point of view and my experience, this is really good to, let's say, get additional knowledge to, uh, to check if uh, the students uh, understand everything and see what, what, is, what is happening. Because like in the, in the training itself, you just check the hands-on and you see if they're able to uh, reach the flag, but then you can ask more questions which are uh, tied to, to the topic. And from the technical part and the technical point of view, uh, I think we just need for this very simple network uh, so let's set up a Kali machine. Let's set, the, let's set up the vulnerable machine. Let's put them in one network. There is no reason to, to make it more complicated because it will, it will, it, it's not necessary and it can bring some issues. We also need to think what we need else except the, the or for the machines. So basically for Kali machine, we don't need anything. It has all the tools we need. We can, or we should just put their custom dictionary for the, the dictionary attack, because it's uh, here, uh, the, the tip is uh, just to use the custom dictionary and put the, the password you're guessing somewhere like in 100, uh, uh, sorry, 100, as, a, as a 100 item or something like that. Uh, so they are not, you don't, you don't want to have students sit in, uh, in your class half a day, just waiting for a password to be guessed. So let's, it's, it's a good idea to put it somewhere from the start, not the first one, but very close to the start. And for the vulnerable machine, we know that we need to uh, locate the telnet uh, on non-standard port because we had this idea to make a bit of obfuscation and see if they are able to, to get it. We need to set the telnet password from the dictionary we have. And we also need, and that's the hardest part for this scenario, to prepare misconfiguration to escalate privileges. I mean, of course, we can also use uh, we can we can also use uh, let's say some tool, or we can or we can exploit any vulnerability. If we are exploiting the vulnerability here, then we need to uh, have the the binary, or we need to have the vulnerable software available. I can strongly recommend to build your own repository of the, of the vulnerable software because you cannot rely on the, the repositories of the Linux machines and so on, because as we know, uh, the, the systems are developing, are moving. So it can happen that 
in uh, you will set up the correct, a nice vulnerability with the with the, something in the repositories and half a year later year later you don't have your vulnerability because the system already moved okay i think that was very very briefly about the design idea there are, there are a lot of things to talk so we will move forward uh, to another presentation thank you for your attention <laughs>